God bless you, dear friends, and welcome to May 29th, 2022 weekly message. Glad to have you on board today. You are listening to the last day's ministry from WGM Church. Hope you all had a blessed week. Before we start our main message, let us begin by hearing and believing the word of God from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Today's main text comes from Psalm 37, verse 1 through 11. Psalm 37, 1 through 11. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil, for evil doers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Father God, we thank you for your grace and truth and your mercy and goodness. We pray for understanding of your word through the power of the Holy Ghost. In Christ Jesus' name, Amen. Ever since the devil brought sin into the world and corrupted the first man, the whole world has become full of sinners and wicked people. Everyone living in fear daily in the end times is witnessing this evil and wickedness. The Holy Ghost prophesied through King David long time ago that at some time in the future the wicked would be cut down like grass and be withered like green herbs. Nevertheless, the devil, Satan, has been deceiving the world for thousands of years to bring peace to the world by using the principalities and powers 
the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. However, we need to understand that there shall be no peace in this world unless God gets rid of Lucifer, the devil, Satan. The Holy Ghost certainly prophesied through the mouth of David. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Again, 37, Psalm 37, verse 10 and 11. In the Bible, the wicked refers to the Antichrist, who will appear to rule the entire world in the near future. It is also a prophecy that when he is gone, the remnant of the Jews who will believe in the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, will inherit the earth, the planet, not just a portion of the land. It is a prophecy that tells us only at this time, peace will truly come to earth. Hebrews chapter 7 tells us about a character named Melchizedek. Now, this was who Abraham gave a tenth part of all of his fortune and belongings. And the Bible interprets his name, first, as the king of righteousness, then king of Salem, which also means king of peace. And when you put it together, it's king of righteousness and peace. The Bible also states he has no father, no mother, no lineage, no beginning and ending of his life, but he was made like unto the Son of God, abiding continually as a priest. He was a mysterious person in the figure of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Righteousness and the Prince of Peace, who would appear to the world. Jesus is the only King who will rule the entire world with the word of righteousness and peace. Now he appeared to the Jews, the descendants of Abraham, in the name of Jesus, making plans for his future rulership in heaven and on earth with righteousness and peace, telling them to pray for his will to be done. Matthew 6 verse 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. So in other words, the word that was in the beginning, the word that was with God the Father, and the word that was God appeared as a man. And the first thing he planned was establishing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. This was his will, and he commanded them to pray for it. In order to fulfill his plan, Jesus, the righteous God, had to first remove all sins, curses, and death that had been sown by the devil. He had to die as a sacrifice on the cross to take away the sins of the world. And also, by his resurrection on the third day, he caused the spiritual kingdom of God to be established in all that believe in him, with righteousness peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He also had a plan to take his children away from the sinful world to heaven at the fullness of time. Apostle Paul testified that this is the day of Christ, the day of the rapture. When the rapture takes place, the evil one, the Antichrist, will appear in the world. Apostle John saw this and testified of his appearing in Revelation 6, verse 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. The Antichrist who appears to oppose the Lord Jesus Christ, 
will do all sorts of evil to conquer the whole world through his own wickedness. The rapture and the coming of the Antichrist will come to pass very soon. Also, we must not overlook the events at the opening of the second seal. It's already being seen before our eyes. Those who are left behind after the rapture takes place will not only see this horrific event, but they'll have to live through it as well. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Revelation 6, verse 3 and 4. The whole world is now trembling in fear as the great sword, the great war is imminent, which will soon lead to a terrible famine and devastating plague all over the world. Apostle John witnessed and testified of conditions that would follow after the war. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Revelation 6, verse 5 and 6. What follows would be a truly hellish world. And John continues of what he saw. Revelation 6, verse 7 and 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Apostle John that witnessed the souls who are beheaded for not receiving the mark of the beast. Revelation 6, verse 9 and 10. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? When the sixth seal was opened, as Jesus mentioned, to his disciples, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, and the moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the ground like fig trees against a strong wind. He also saw the sky would be rolled up like a scroll and get swept away, and every mountain and island would be removed from its place. Apostle John witnessed the great judgment of God. In order to finally accomplish God's will in heaven, the Lord will use his military commander, Archangel Michael, to cast the devil and his angels out of heaven down to earth. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Revelation 12, 
verse 7 through 12. Apostle John saw and testified to the vision of God's will being accomplished in heaven. And now seeing the will of God being done on earth, John testified, Revelation 19, verse 19 through 21, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Father God's will shall be done in heaven and on earth when he sets up his kingdom in heaven and on earth as Jesus said. After the judgment of Satan in heaven and the judgment of Antichrist, the beast, and the false prophet on earth along with all the nations that followed them. So this is when prophecy spoken by David will be fulfilled, as he spoke in Psalm 37, verse 10, For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. Therefore, Christians living in these last days should always trust in the Lord, who gives us desires of our hearts when we delight in the Lord. Rest in the Lord, wait for him, hope for the day of Father's will to be done, all while living peacefully in the Holy Ghost. Jesus will return soon. He will come for his church first, the chaste bride of Christ, before he allows the great tribulation to start on earth. He will then return on his second coming with the church to destroy the unbelieving world. He will then set up and rule his millennial kingdom here on earth. He invites everyone into his kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Admit your sinner for not believing in the blood shed by Jesus. Repent and believe in this gospel, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You must repent and believe the gospel with all your heart. Pray for wisdom and understanding of the Holy Bible as you study, and let Jesus lead you in truth and spirit. Jesus is waiting for you even today. The day of salvation is now and today. God bless and have a wonderful day.